As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast. You can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. I'm going to be teaching on here for the next couple minutes, and it's going to be amazing. I'm talking to you about prophetic secrets on here. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. You know, hell is a real place. Hell is a place where people are living for all eternity because they rejected the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is really Jesus in invisible form, spirit form, talking to man. Telling them how he wants their life to go. What decisions he wants them to make. And you can reject the Holy Spirit. You can reject the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah 1 17 says you learn to do well. Which means that you have to learn. How to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. You have to learn. You have to train yourself to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 117 shows you that you have to learn how to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 119 shows you that this is an option if you be willing. You got to train your will. Remember what Apostle Paul said in the New Testament, when I will to do good, evil is present. So Apostle Paul was saying that the will is connected oftentimes to the former knowledge that you was given by Satan on how to disobey God. In the book of James, Apostle James said that when a man is tempted, let him not say that he's being tempted by God because God is not tempted by evil, neither does he tempt any man. So God doesn't tempt man to do evil. So, Temptation is simply the knowledge that the serpent introduces to you when you're accessible, when you're bored, when you're weary. Galatians 6 says that you could faint. When you start fainting, when you get weary, that's when the serpent teaches you evil which is a decision-making that's contrary to what God wants you to do. Isaiah 120 says that if you refuse and rebel, 
you'll be devoured by the sword. You can refuse the will of God. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18 says that poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. You can refuse the instructions of the Holy Spirit. It'll land you in a place called hell. Hell is a real place. Right now, people are there crying out. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 50, it calls hell the furnace of fire. And it calls hell a place where there's welling and gnashing of teeth. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 50, calls hell a furnace of fire. Just think about that. A furnace of fire. A furnace of fire. A furnace of fire. And people are welling and they're gnashing their teeth because they're in pain. You gnash your teeth when the pain is so harsh. You gnash your teeth when you're going through excruciating pain. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, call it a furnace of fire. With this wailing and gnashing of teeth, which means people are crying out right now. Hell is a real place. Hell is a place underneath the earth. Hell is a place where people go. Even when they choose to be religious. But they don't follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hell is a place that people go when they do not disconnect from people that's not supposed to be in their life. Hell is a real place. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, Whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15 is talking about a book of life. Your name is written in the book of life when you receive Jesus as your instructor. I know you heard like Jesus, the Lord of your life, but many people don't even understand that concept. What is Jesus being the Lord of your life? It's him being your instructor. Him being able to tell you what to do. Because John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I think that's John 15, 14 that say, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you to do. Just think about this. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15 says, whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. Mark chapter 9 verse 44. Mark chapter 9 verse 46. And Mark chapter 9 verse 48. Says that the worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. Three different times. Mark chapter 9 44. Mark chapter 9 46. Mark chapter 9 48. Says that the fire is not quenched. Said the worm dieth not. The fire is not quenched. Just think about this. It's saying that hell is a place where the fire is never quenched. Do you know fire never being quenched? Meaning that it's never turned down. It never stops. It never ceases. It never gets lower. It never decreases in power. It is not quenched. Now, Revelation chapter 12. Where did, why did God create hell? Satan and Satan's angels. But if you see what Apostle Paul was saying, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and Ephesians and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. But in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it said, behold, I give you power to trample over the serpent, the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. Why did Jesus first say the serpent? Because we find in Genesis chapter 3 and on that it was the serpent that was able to deceive the woman. 
So the serpent represents a dimension of deception, which is the first stage of disobeying God. You have to be deceived first before you could do something that he doesn't want you to do. Are you seeing this? So the serpent was the first bracket. The serpent was the first bracket because the serpent represents the place where you are following something that God, hold on, let me see something. I want you to say it real quick, but I don't want you to get distracted. Come on, stay right there. As you're joining in, I want you to share this broadcast, everybody. Share this broadcast so someone can hear the gospel. Share the broadcast so someone can hear the gospel. As you're joining in. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns. So just think about that. Underneath the earth is a location called hell. There are different parts of hell. We have prison. People are locked up. We have, and they're tormented in their cell. Now, I want you to understand the part prison is where spirits talk to you that successfully got you to disobey God throughout the course of your life. So let me show you this. Like say the Holy Spirit wanted you to get out of a relationship with somebody. And you stayed with them. And as a result, you ended up in hell. Like you lived a life contrary to what God wanted you to live. When you're in prison, those spirits talk to you and say, I was the one that had you stay in that relationship. And they torment you. In a prison, in a cell, a person will have even animals that they're familiar with on earth, talking to them because that was the form and the body of that demon that was ruling their life. So sometimes it's, it's ants, sometimes it's spiders, sometimes it's bats, sometimes it's rats, and they'll talk to you and tell you, I was the one that got you to turn against your prophet of God. I was the one that told you not to leave that city when God told you not to leave that city. And they mock you. For all eternity. They torment your psychological state. So in hell, it's not only physical torment. It's not only the body going through stuff. It is mental realization that you've been tricked. Now, saints, I want to show you like this on earth. Say somebody right now smiles in your face, say, I came to give you a million dollars and I love you so much. I'm going to buy a house for you. And they're talking to you, talking to you. And they say, I just need you to follow me down the street. And as soon as you follow them down the street, they have all these men standing with pistols. And they say, put your hands behind your back. You got to get in the trunk right now. And they wrap you up and they put you in the trunk. While you're inside of the trunk. You will be tormented at the fact that you were tricked by them before they ever shoot you, before they ever harm you, before they ever do anything to affect you physically. Mentally, you're already affected because you're like, how did I get tricked? So in hell, one of the biggest torments other than the physical and the tangible is the mental. Knowing that you had the blood of Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit, you had prayer, you had seed sowing, honoring God, you had the opportunity to go boldly to the throne of grace, to receive grace in the time of trouble. You had all accessibility to the power of God, the grace of God, and you didn't receive it. And this wasn't 
even necessary for you to take that path that leads to hell. Because you had all these weapons. You had all these weapons of your warfare right in your grip. So saints, I want you to catch this. A lot of people in hell, when they're down there three years, four years, they are living mental torment as well because they had so much moments in their life. I mean innumerable. You can't even say a million chances. You can't say a billion chances. You can't say a trillion chances because they had more than enough multiplied moments where the Holy Spirit was setting them up to be delivered from the devil. I think that's Psalm 107 verse 20 that said that he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them out of all their troubles. Psalm 107. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Psalm 107 verse 20. In Titus chapter 2 verse 11, it says the grace of God has appeared to uh, that bring us salvation has appeared to all men. In verse 12 says teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says that sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, you are underneath grace. The grace of God is the power of God. The grace of God is the Lord giving you the mind of Christ. The grace of God is the Lord purging your thoughts from wicked ways. It was Isaiah the prophet, I think that's Isaiah 55, said, call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord while he is near. Call upon him while he's near. There's coming a time where God hides himself. Isaiah also talked about how God hideth himself. Why does he hide himself? Because he wants you to seek him with the whole heart. Psalm 34 says that he that seeks the Lord shall not want for anything. If you seek the Lord, you start to take on a moment of reflection. Because remember what the words say, by their fruits you shall know them. But Galatians chapter 5 talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Being love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, self-control, goodness, faith. The fruit of the Spirit. John chapter 15 says that when God wants you to bear more fruit, John 15 too said that he purgeth you that you may bear more fruit. John 15 three says that you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. So it's the word that God speaks to you that gets you clean. Psalm 119 verse nine says that how should a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed according to the word of God, according to the word. So the word has to become your fascination. The word does a miracle in the brain, changing it from corruption to Christ likeness. The word does a miracle in the brain, changing it from the demonic to deliverance, witchcraft to wisdom wickedness to true worship the word john 15 3 the word that i've spoken to you makes you clean i want you to share this broadcast as you're joining in i need you to share the broadcast i just need 15 people to share this to your page and invite your followers so they can hear the gospel we are coming at the end of time let me just tell you this when we get to the point where a man doesn't know if he's a man and a woman doesn't know if she's a woman, 
We're at the end of time. This is what Satan wanted. To corrupt the souls of men. To corrupt the souls of men. To the degree where they're confused. Because what did the word say? God is not the author of confusion. That's what Apostle Paul preached. We're at the end of time. We're living on borrowed time. And if you die today, tomorrow, next week, if the world ends, you either go into hell or heaven. And you can't go to heaven simply because you hope you're going to heaven. I hope I'm, I'm going to make it in. No, this is an intentional decision. What did James chapter 1 verse 5 say? If any man lack, act, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally to all and upbraideth not. If you lack wisdom, you could freely ask the Lord and he'll give it to you. That's the powerful thing. You don't have to live confused and in the dark. You could ask for wisdom on purpose and get it. He'll give it to you. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally to all. That means black, white, big, skinny, short, tall, uneducated, educated, political, non-political, don't matter. You speak Spanish, you speak another language, Chinese, he'll give it to you. Just think about this. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a place where people that rejected the voice of the Holy Ghost, his counsel, his instruction, they lived there for all eternity. I want you to remember this. That when somebody goes to hell, there's no oxygen. There's no life circulating in their lungs because it is the Lord. Isaiah said that he breathes his breath upon the earth. He sends his breath on the earth. Isaiah revealed that God sends his breath to the earth. That's how man breathes. That's how man experiences oxygen. When people go to hell, they rep recognize, oh, I wasn't just breathing just because that's just some common function. I was breathing because the Lord was sending his breath to the earth. He was sending his oxygen. Look what Isaiah 42 verse 5 say. It says that he created, thus saith God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He has spread forth the earth. It says that he that giveth breath unto the people that walk upon the earth and spirit to them that walk therein. Look what the word of God telling you. It's telling you that God was the one that gives oxygen. Isaiah 45. Oh, Isaiah 42. God was the one that was given the oxygen. So in hell, there's no oxygen. Everybody has asthma. Everybody has COVID in hell. Everybody is suffocating. They don't have no air, no oxygen. Because it was the Lord that was given the oxygen. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to live separated from the Lord for all eternity. Lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets you.
That's what Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 say. Lay aside the weight and the sin that so easy, easily beset you. And it said, let us run the race that is set before us. Run the race. See, it's a race. One thing that you understand about a race is that a race requires you to have stamina. A race requires you to have continuance and diligence. When you run in a race, you have to be hydrated, which means that you have to drink a lot of water. Which is the water of the word. If you're going to run the race, you're going to have to learn to meditate on what? The word of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. You understand? Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. He that endures to the end shall be saved in order for you to run a race. Because Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset you, let us run the race that is set before us. For you to run a race, you'll need endurance. You'll need endurance. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. You have to learn to endure, endure even temptation because the power of God comes and breaks the tangibility of that urge. You have to learn to wait when you're tempted. Wait when you want to say something you're not supposed to say. Wait when you want to go somewhere you're not supposed to go. Just wait. Psalm 46, be still and know that I'm God. God speaks to you when you wait, when you're patient and when you endure a moment and you, you, you are calmly anticipating his responses. What did Titus 2.11 say? The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Confused men, transgender men, homosexual men, lying men, stealing men, distracted men, lustful men, angry men, bitter men, all type of men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Who was the appearance? The book of Timothy said, said that the mystery of godliness was revealed. That God was manifested in the flesh. The book of John says that you beheld the glory of God. Colossians talked about Jesus being the image of the invisible God. The body of the Godhead. It was Philip that asked Jesus, show us the father and that'll be sufficient for us. And Jesus said, he that seeth me, seeth the father. Isaiah chapter nine, I believe it was Isaiah that called the Lord, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Just think about this. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, Titus 2.11, has appeared to all men. The Titus 2.12 said, teaching us that, denying ungodliness. See, you got to learn to deny ungodliness. You got to deny it. When you deny something, that means that it presents itself to you as an option. It comes to you as a suggestion. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Worldly lusts are lusts that are introduced to you when you watch the world. You look at people that are not restrained by the Holy Spirit or the word of God. They're not interested in the things of the Lord. When you watch them, you receive information on what you can do 
to defy God's authority over you. You, you, you discover a system of life, a way of talking, a way of dressing, a way of acting, a way of pursuing things, a way of raising children, a way of marriage. You learn from studying the world. Worldly lust is where you watch people that do not have the Holy Ghost and you receive their rhythm of decisions, their perception of choices, their concepts of solutions. Are you seeing this? So the grace of God comes to destroy that yoke that you learn from the world. The world teach you that somebody is cute because their face look nice. That's what the world teach you. That somebody is sexy because they got abs. Because they got muscles. The world teaches you how to move in adultery. Jesus said that if your eye looketh upon a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her in your heart. Which means that's not your woman. The Holy Spirit has not given you that woman for you to enjoy that woman. But you're looking at her and vice versa. You look at a man. The man is not your man. So why are you lusting? Why are you having thoughts about that man? Every thought that you have is not from God. Everything that you think in your mind is not from God. You have to start recognizing that the Bible says that the mind, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Ezekiel 36, 26. I believe that's Ezekiel 36, 26. God said, I'll take out that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you. The Holy Spirit has to come inside of a person so that you'll start recognizing what darkness you have permitted within yourself. Because if you don't get rid of the darkness, you're not going to have eternal life. Bible said, every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds done in his body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. When you give an account of the deeds done in your body, that's evil. That's not going to accumulate eternal life. That's not, not, that's not going to get you into eternal life. You have to let go of things that are bringing you into hell and destruction. And see, what was the purpose of time? Fruit bearing. Why did the Holy Spirit give you time today to bear fruit? John 15, the Lord said that the Father purgeth you so that you can bear forth more fruit. John 15, verse 2, more fruit. Romans 6.23 says the wages for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through, through Jesus Christ. The wages for sin, when you do things God doesn't want you to do, the payment is death and death is eternal hell. It's you being disconnected from God here on earth in your soul because in Genesis, the Bible says when God created Adam, he, he made him a living soul, gave him a living soul. Man became a living soul. The purpose of time is to bear more fruit. What is fruit? Acts that are instructed by the Holy Spirit. That's what more fruit is. Acts that are instructed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is telling you to do these things. Hallelujah. What are fruits that come from God that bring you into heaven? It is Holy Spirit influenced 
activity, Holy Spirit influenced events, Holy Spirit influenced words, Holy Spirit influenced deeds. There's some of you all watching me right now. You got to recognize this. Your path is on the way to hell. You don't want to go to hell. You have time to bear the fruit. You have time to even repent. Holy Spirit give you time to repent. And then here's what you mainly have to repent of because the reason why weakness begins to spread in a person's life is because you're not spending enough time talking with the Lord and letting him talk to you. You don't sing to the Lord. You don't calm your soul to hear him. You don't think about him conversing with you. And you don't, you don't sanctify your soul to pursue what he is saying. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, to cry aloud for wisdom and knowledge. When's the last time you cried out to God to give you wisdom and knowledge so that you could please him? Not so that people would think that you're so profound. But you cry out for wisdom and knowledge so that you could be a pleasurable experience for God. It's Hebrews eleven six 6 that said that without faith is impossible to please God. And he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of they that diligently what? Seek him. You got to get to the point right now where you recognize a hundred years from now, I'm not going to be in just nowhere. I'm going to be in heaven or I'm going to be in hell. And it's all my decision. It ain't got nothing to do with Satan. It ain't got nothing to do with demons. It's just what I decide. Oftentimes demons just connect themselves to man because man is doing the evil. They just join on and possess you because you have created the atmosphere for their presence. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. I've been dwelling on that, that Revelation 20 verse 15. Whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Some of you all will never go inside of your, your oven right now and cook yourself. You, you want to put your oven on 350 and then just hop in there. So why would you go to hell? Huh? You want to put your hand inside of the oven while it's fully cooking at 400 degrees. Why would you go to hell? Why? You want to put your face inside of your oven right now. You want to put your face inside even the microwave. You want to put your stove on and put your whole body there and cook your arm and then cook your leg. You want to do that. Cook your face. Why would you choose the lake of fire? Whosoever was not written in the book of life. Psalm chapter 2 say, kiss the sun. What does that mean? Kiss up to Jesus. Kiss up to Jesus. Matthew chapter 5 says, Those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, they shall be filled. Filled with what? Filled with who? The Holy Ghost. They'll be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost will give you the power to live holy. The power of the Holy Ghost will give you the power to sanctify yourself. The power of the Holy Ghost will give you the power to speak life words. Proverbs 18, 21 says life and the death, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
being filled with the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts said that Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Meaning the wisdom of God, that place in the spirit world, dominated his decisions. Why was David able to restrain himself from killing Saul? Because he was in that place, wisdom, where Stephen was. When Solomon asked God in Chronicles, give me wisdom and understanding that I may lead your people. He entered into that place in the spirit world, is in heaven. I told you different dimensions. I talked about section C. I talked about different dimensions that I've gone. The libraries of heaven. Wisdom is a place. Wisdom is a place. It's a place of information and education that comes from the Holy Ghost. He gives it to you on this earth. That make you brilliant in your choices, your, your, your words, your actions, your facial expressions, your body language, how you spend your time. My goodness. My goodness. King Jesus possess me again. Holy Spirit. Take over my members and make me an instrument of righteousness at all times. It's a powerful prayer. He's listening to you. King Jesus possess me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Make my members instruments of righteousness. When I say members, I'm talking about fingers, hands, toes. Fill my body with light. Give me grace to have a single eye. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. 23. Give me a single eye. Fill my body with the light of God. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, God is light. In him is no darkness at all. In him is no darkness at all. That means in the Lord, there is no river of rebellion, corruption, energy to do the wrong thing, energy to destroy yourself. In God, there is no darkness at all. God is light. We go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, says that, he that saith that he is in him ought to walk as he walked. I think that's 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 says that the seed of God remaineth in you and you cannot sin. Whosoever is born of God, the seed of God remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. He's born of God. First John said that all sin is unrighteous. All unrighteousness is sin. Just think about. There's so much of the power of the spirit that you have not been patient enough to even walk in. And you got to let that power start to be introduced to you so that you can make the decisions. My goodness. You got to you got to start being more patient, waiting for the power of God. Remember what they did. The 120 waited for the power of God. There is a river. And it flows from deep within. There is a fountain. That frees. The soul from sin. Come, come to these waters. There is a vast supply. There is a river that never 
shall run dry. The Holy Ghost gave the promise that his mighty power will descend and from my inner being, from your inner being, shall flow a river with no end. There is a river and it flows from deep within. There is a fountain that frees the soul from sin, from sin. Come, come to this holy water. There is a vast supply. There is a river that never shall run dry. There is a river that never shall run dry. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. The millions have come. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you, for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. The millions, millions have come. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. 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 Rock of Ages. Clap for me. Let me hide myself in the rock of ages. Clap for me. Clap for me. Let me hide. Myself in thee. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble Humble cry while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. You hear what the song is saying? While on others thou art calling. Thou art calling, oh, do, do not pass me by, while on others thou art called, thou art calling, do not pass me by say the name of Jesus say the name so precious say the name of Jesus there's no other name I know that can calm your fears, dry your tears, and take away your pain. When you don't know what else to pray, and you can't find the words to say, Say the name, say the name of Jesus, say the name, oh, oh, oh so precious, say the name, so precious. No other name I know. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. Open the eyes of 
my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I'm telling you, those of you all on here, you have in time for fruit bearing. You have in time for repentance. As you can see, the state of the earth, the state of man, we're coming to an end of the age. I want to live all eternity with you. Eternal life is better than anything the flesh will offer you. And just always remember, the Holy Spirit be having a schedule of pleasure for your life. Because what did Psalm 16 say? Verse 11 and all. At his right hand are pleasures in the presence of God is fullness of joy. At the Lord's right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. You don't want to miss eternal life. You don't want to miss eternal life. Say, King Jesus, possess me. Holy Spirit, take me over so that I would follow your ways. So that I would please your request. Say Holy Spirit. I want to be perfect in you. All the time. 24-7. The Bible said be ye perfect. As your father in heaven is perfect. And I receive that grace right now. I receive the grace of God. To be perfect. I receive the grace of God. To walk in the ways of wisdom and life. Everybody share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. And receive the wisdom of God and the understanding of God going into September. You're going to need wisdom in September. You're going to need wisdom in September. I saw going into the fall that Israel would have more wars, Israel, the Jewish people, will have more wars in Israel. And yes, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Michael is over there, though. They won't be destroyed. Nobody like just going to tarnish their land and like, you know, just blow up Israel. But they'll need. They'll need. That when you're in prayer, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, I decree, I agree for the peace of Jerusalem because Jerusalem, they're going to have some wars over there. It's not going to stop now. I saw the war going in through um, the fall between the Jewish people. And I'm going to tell you this. Watch this here. Netanyahu is really going to need wisdom on what to do next because they had a crossroads. They need another set of wisdom, but Netanyahu, this is what I saw. Um, right now, Netanyahu is more so in the, um, the fierceness of battle. But not the wisdom of the voice of God, like asking the Lord what to do. Like, that's not what he's really doing. So it, it could go kind of left for the Jewish people. Because let me just show you this. Say like, um, say like, um, uh, say like I, my name is uh, uh, Chitu. And I start fighting with um, Chicago. I'm fighting with Chicago. I'm fighting with Chicago. And I get so involved in the fighting with Chicago. I'm not praying no more. I'm not talking to the Lord no more. I'm just like, I know what to do. I got this. I got this. I got it. And then 
While I'm fighting with Chicago, I might get shot in the knee. I might get shot in the leg. Bow, bow, bow. I might get shot. I might end up in the hospital. Stuff might go left. And it's like, well, well, wait. The Lord is with you, Chit, too. So what, why, why is you ending up like in a, 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 like, it's looking real tragic here. It's looking like it's a defeat here because I'm no longer listening. You see what I'm saying? So we pray for Benjamin Netanyahu that the spirit of prayer from the Holy Ghost would sit on him, that he would inquire of wisdom because he's going to need it because the battles are going to increase going into the fall for the Jewish people. Um, remember, I prophesied to you some weeks ago and told you that we'll see an uprise of COVID again. I prophesied to you and told you that we'll see COVID show up all, all of a sudden. Remember I told you, I told you that we'll see COVID show up all of a sudden. It was like it was gone, but then all of a sudden now we got new strand. And I told you that they're going to push new vaccines. Just wait for it. Just wait for it because we'll see it more prevalent going into fall. Going into the fall month. Uh, we had some issues with flights earlier this year. But I'm going to tell you this. The flight organization is in such a chaos right now because they have less workers. They have less people that are flying, uh, flight attendants and things like that. And even... um. Uh, people that are flying um, pilots and things like that, we're going to see that flights are going to be in disorder and mailing going into the fall. Remember what I'm telling you. We're going to see how flights and flight cancellation and flight disorder will see it continuing in fall. Let me just say this to you. Internet companies... Internet companies is 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 like they're going to be they're going to be underneath fire. It's like people are going to want to sue them because it's like you're, you're going to find that a lot of internet companies they're going to be exposed that they were stealing. The product that they promised to produce in their in their uh, their agreements is like it's like they're going to be exposed. They're going to be brought before a council. Remember what I'm telling you, man. Remember what I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because it's like these things are so clear and plain to me. And when I speak them to you, as you can see, they always happen. I told you that Obama was going to be in the news. Obama not even running for president. I told you that Obama will be headlining the news. I have prophesied to a lot of people, told them that Obama will be headlining the news on like uh, what that was, June, July 29th, per se, July 29th, July 30th or whatever. So why was Obama headlining the news in August the 21st? You see what I'm saying? But these are things to come. Also, those of you all that eat plant-based food, you better stop eating that plant-based food. I'm trying to help you. Those of you all that be talking about you going vegan and you eating this and stuff, stop leaning to your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3. Stop leaning to your own understanding. I'm trying to help you. Don't lean to plant-based foods. Stop talking about I'm eating a plant-based burger. I'm eating a plant-based dinner, plant-based. Listen, I told you that there's going to be an exposure of people eating those foods that are called plant-based. They safe. You know what the word of God say? In the New Testament, I want to read this to you. I want to show you something. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. It says, for every creature of God is good. 
and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. Watch this verse five. Verse five, so powerful. Verse five, so powerful. Look what it says in verse five. It says, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he bears. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Look what it says, for it is sanctified. That's the New Testament, by the way. By the word of God and prayer. So just be very wise and don't lean to your own understanding. Remember what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, I think Proverbs 3, 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. Sometimes you're wise in your own eyes. You think you know how to eat. You know how to eat meals. I got it. I, I'm going to pick my diet. Let the Holy Spirit help you in picking your diet. Now, I'm going to tell you this. One major food that is going to be a blessing to your soul in these last days is watermelon. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, like everything is, is, is basically you have to pray and sanctify by the word of God in prayer. What does it mean to sanctify food by the word of God? Decree the word over the food. Decree the blessing over the food. Decree it. Speak it over the food. There's power in your words to create the manifestation of God's light in any situation, even your soul. You're going to have to decree the light of God in your soul. You're going to have to decree the light of God in your soul. I want to say this, that um, you'll see another assassination attempt on President Donald Trump. But it is going is 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 not going to be uh, successful. The first assassination attempt that we just saw recently, the angel of President Donald J. Trump protected Donald J. Trump. I know some of you are you blind, and I want to help you. I know you blind. You've been deceived by the God of this world. You listen to the news media. You listen to your flesh. You enter this black stuff, which is so stupid. You carnal and fleshly. But I want to let you know this. That God is with President Donald J. Trump. I want you to understand that. <laughs> I want you to understand that. And all, all that fleshly and carnality that you got. Just understand the Holy Ghost not with you. I'm just letting you know. When you're talking against Donna J. Trump, you got all this criticism. You talking about Kamala Black and all this carnal, 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 carnal. You're carnal. That's why the church kept getting rebuked because they're so fleshly. The same people that got delivered by Moses was the same people that said. They started complaining and said, when we was with Pharaoh, he fed us good. These was the same people that was groaning to get out of Pharaoh's grip. You a black person watching me? Die to yourself and stop being carnal. Stop being carnal. Stop being fleshly. And those of you all that don't understand this, I done prophesied the impeachment of Donald J. Trump. I done prophesied the victory of the impeachment. I done prophesied that in spring that he would be uh, the jail sentence and the conviction. I done prophesied all of that stuff. If you if you want to do a track record on everything I prophesied, I done prophesied all this stuff before it happened. So it's not like I'm just jumping on a bandwagon. I'm just letting you know. 
Because the reason how Satan is able to blind you all's eyes is because you're carnal. You're fleshly. And then let me just tell you something. You expecting Donald Trump to be praying in tongues every minute, jerking every minute, talking. No, no, no. God picks people according to what he sees fit for his agenda. The agenda of God is in Donald Trump. It's not in Kamala Harris. So. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have to prophesy that stuff to you. I mean, like if you got a brain, like you should be able to see that. But sadly, so. I mean, we got to just talk about stuff like that. If you if, and if you ever look. Black people only want to vote for somebody because they're saying that they're black. How stupid. How stupid you won't get, man. You voted for somebody on the, on the basis of skin color? That's your basis? You're not looking at the policies? You're not looking at the inflation in the land, how the land is underneath curses. The land is dependent on China now. The land is in poverty. The land is neglecting its citizens for people that's on the outside and giving them more help than people that been working for America and they need the help. You don't see that. You don't vote for a president based upon Oh, their race is this. Oh, they black. Oh, they a woman. That's not the basis of voting for a president. The basis for voting a president is recognizing what the Holy Spirit wants to accomplish. How much of that is in this person? People ain't looking at that. You black people don't let Satan bewitch you with that slave mindset to look at skin color. Don't. Let the veil succeed over skin color. Follow the spirit and get out the flesh. A lot of people call themselves believers. They are fleshly. They are carnal. What does it mean to be carnal? You have reasons and opinions that are sculptured by the observation of the serpent. So the serpent shows you this and this. Let me just give you an example of carnality in the word of God. Samuel is told by God to go pick a king, which is a president. S Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is so powerful, man. The Holy Ghost is having him go pick a king. Remember what he does. He goes to Jesse's house and he goes and looks at the strongest of sons. He goes and looks at what they're wearing and how they look. And this is what Samuel did in his human brain. He's a prophet. He looks at them and says, this one over here, he looks like a king. He's looking at Eliab. He's looking at all the, the big, macho, muscular, tall looking kings. King-like structure. And God rebuked him and said, I, the Lord, does not look at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. I'm looking at what qualities I'm looking for to accomplish in the nation that's in this person. The qualities of God that God want to accomplish in the land of America is not in Kamala Harris. It's in President Donald J. Trump. Oh, I, I feel the devil mad right now. I feel the devil mad right now. <laughs> I feel Satan real mad. I I feel people fuming right. <laughs> and I want to tell you this. It was the Holy Ghost that moved Joe Biden out the way. It was the Holy Ghost that pushed him out the way. Even Joe Biden said, Joe Biden said, if I'm not supposed to keep running, the good Lord will get me out. The good Lord got him out. People blind as a bat running through July 4th. 
They're blind. But that's why we have prophets. God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals it to the servant, his prophet. Wow. So, um, you want to really look into having quiet time with the Holy Spirit so that he can reposition you, recalibrate you, uh, revamp you so that you could catch his will. Remember that the Holy Spirit hides his will for those that seek him. The Bible says in Romans 12, don't be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind cannot be renewed. Ephesians 4, 23 and on talked about being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind can't be renewed. I think that's Ephesians uh, 4, 23 and on. But your mind cannot be renewed until you have quiet time with the Holy Spirit. So don't neglect your quiet time with the Holy Spirit. It don't have to be a long time. But the more that you flowing with him is going to be longer and longer because he's going to say a lot of things to you. And the reward for quiet and quality time with the Holy Spirit is clarity of his will. That's the reward. That's the reward. The reward for quiet and quality time with the Holy Spirit is that your mind is renewed. And let me just talk to you about this. Your spirit is a battery. Your soul is a battery. Like right now, some of you all soul is on 20% in life. But you listen to this message I just released. Now it's at 100. You get off this broadcast. You hear something. You get back into natural flow. It start getting at 80, 75, 60, 45. Before you know it, days later it's at 20 again. Then it get down to 10%. Then it's, it's, it's all red. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you pray in tongues, you charge the battery fast. You know there's different charges. It's talk about a quick charging battery. The, the quick charge of your spirit and soul is praying in tongues. With your imagination at work. Because your imagination is really important. That's how you pray with your whole heart. A lot of times people do stuff. They don't do it with their whole heart. So when you pray in the spirit with your whole heart, your imagination have to be at work. That means the Holy Spirit, because you have intentionally positioned yourself there mentally, he can send pictures to your brain. A lot of the trances that I have is because my brain is already expecting a trance. So while my eyes is open, I'll see something while my eyes is open because I'm already expecting it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? The open visions that I have, most times it could be during the day, during the night, but my, my, my soul is already anticipating it. I'm expecting it. See, notice the book of Acts, Peter received uh, uh, a trance, an open vision. But Peter is already in the place. The atmosphere, because remember, he has a prayer regiment. He's praying with his whole heart. He's listening for the voice of God. Man, you got to watch this whole broadcast. This has been too powerful. And it's been great being with you all. Thank you for listening to the message. Um, thank you for honoring this ministry. Uh, thank you for praying. For Prophet Joshua Holmes, not because I'm trying to come out of sin or I'm trying to break a weakness or trying to, that's not the purpose of the prayer. The purpose of the prayer is that the word of the Lord would swiftly be able to be published through me without hindrances. That's what the prayer is for, not for me to overcome some sin, overcome some secret sin. That's not what the prayer is for. But I'm saying thank you for praying that the work of ministry will go forth because, of course, we have. We have um, we have principalities we have to break through. 
in every different region, every different country. So, um, and thank you so much for sharing this broadcast. Thank you so much for your commenting. Thank you for your presence. Uh, thank you for sowing money into this ministry. I want you to be aware of scammers. I have a lot of fake accounts. I have a lot of people that ask you for money in your DMs. That's not me. So I want you to be aware there are going to be fake accounts being made after I do this broadcast. There's so many fake accounts. I thank Facebook for giving me a blue check because we had so much uh, Facebook accounts that were being made in my name and talking to you and, and telling you to send money Western Union. And that wasn't me. So I want you to recognize that as well, that I don't have a WhatsApp that I'm praying for you on and taking your prayer requests. So please disconnect from that. Okay? <laughs> disconnect from that WhatsApp. <laughs> the Holy Ghost just showed me that. Disconnect from that WhatsApp group. I'm not praying for you there. And I'm not a part of that. So disconnect from that. And be aware of a lot of fake accounts. And thank you for praying for the ministry. Thank you for sowing money into the ministry. Of course, we have PayPal, Profit Homes at AOL.com. Profit Homes at AOL.com. We have Cash App, Dollar Sign, Money Cometh to You Now. I'm going to show you. I'm also going to post on the cover page on here. So I'll post it on the cover page just so that you can see it in a platform where you can see it rather than me just verbally saying it. But I gave you the verbal, but I'll show you the visual as well. All right. So everybody bless you. Thank you so much. Father, I said what you told me to say. Holy Spirit, thank you for the privilege to minister to my people. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. For those that you have given me to hear this wisdom that you have imparted to me and have invested in this vessel of honor. Thank you so much for the privilege. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that will choose to receive your voice and your will in their personal life. And I pray for every single person that they will come out of their sin, their iniquities, their weaknesses, their flaws, that they will receive the glory light of the gospel into their souls, that they will decree the glory light of the gospel in their souls. And that they will pursue your wisdom for their cities and their personal life and their personal relationships from this moment forth that you'll be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Bless every one of you all. I'll be seeing you some more because I have hundreds of teachers that I'm releasing. So bless you.